Hey, Tim Sykes here, and I wanted to do this video lesson earlier today. I just ran out of time. I had to give a whole Q&A webinar uh, for my challenge students because I want to go over this pattern that's really working well uh, right now and also some of the things that are coming up because I know we got a lot of stuff coming up and it's confusing for some people. So let me just simplify it. I'll talk about these stocks uh, in one second. First, uh, April 26th, we have a Stephen Ducks live trading webinar. That is only for my trading challenge students. Uh, you know, I did a Q&A webinar this week. I do live trading every other week. So next week, Stephen Ducks is going to be the one doing the live trading webinar. I think a few weeks ago we had Tim Gratani, and before that we had Mark Crook. So we alternate. That's part of the beauty of the trading challenge. But mark it down, trading challenge students, April 26th. Um, I believe 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern will be Stephen Ducks giving a live trading webinar. Uh, and for those of you who don't know who uh, Stephen Ducks is, um, he actually is feeling a little exhausted right now, but he's done a lot. He's made nearly a million dollars. If you've seen this video that we made uh, just over a week ago, and it's kind of gone viral with over 50,000 views, um, he explains who he is and all that, and he's fantastic. He's learned a lot, and now you know he's in this awesome position of giving back to the community and teaching. So we're very grateful to have him. But everyone asking for access to the live trading webinar, no, you have to be a trading challenge student. You all do have access to my free webinar that I'm giving on May 1st. Uh, you might have seen me tweet it uh, right here. And it links to this page. Sorry, I'm on the slow Wi-Fi. I'm traveling right now. I'm working on my charity, and I'm enjoying life a little bit in Asia, so I'm looking kind of crazy. Uh, but this will be a 100% free webinar for everybody on May 1st. I'll post the link uh, to how you get in on this uh, just below this video, um, or just look at my tweets You know, pretty much for the next like two weeks until May 1st. Um, it will be recorded, but trust me, you're going to want to watch it live. And I have a little surprise for some of you guys who watch it live. Uh, but that's going to be free for everybody. So mark down May 1st. I believe it is 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, also, just to – I'm getting way too many emails. Just to answer this, my birthday sale on Profitly uh, will end on May 1st. And the birthday sale on Stocks to Trade will end May 1st. And I've been tweeting it. I've been – Linking it, a lot of people have been asking what are the exact times. I was going to cut it off, but this way it's just easier, just May 1st. Everything is May 1st, so focus on May 1st, okay? Um, you get the free webinar and the two sales are going to be ending. There will be no extensions. I have no patience. I have no tolerance anymore. The cool thing about being real in an industry full of scams is I get to choose my students. I know it sounds corny. I know some people get offended, but really, I just don't have time. As you can see by my doing this video lesson, like in the middle of the night, Eastern Standard Time, too much shit is going on. May 1st ends the birthday sale, so you have plenty of time to take advantage and save a ton on newsletters and DVDs and save a ton on stocks to trade. Also, if you want to learn part-time trading, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is Tim Bowen. Uh, he's spoken at my conference a few years now. He's a part-time trader. He makes roughly 50 grand a year. Nothing huge, but part-time. And so he has been giving live uh, trading webinars near the market open and near the market close every single day. Um, so he doesn't even look at the market in the middle of the day. I don't think he really looks at after hours that much. It's specifically part-time. And he teaches how to use the Stocks to Trade platform to do this. Uh, if, so if you go to stockstotrade.com slash pro, uh, I put it in here, you can learn how to focus on the market open and the market close. Even if you're not a part-time trader, I really think what he teaches is really exceptional. Um, there's a guy, Ed, Ed Bogart, Ed Bogey, and he's done fantastic. Uh, you can see his trades on a few different stocks, you know, just making two, three, 400 uh, here or there, and it adds up. I guess he didn't add it up here. <laughs> so this is like 200 and 400, so 600, 700. He lost 50, so like 650 back, 700, 1,000. So in April, you know, this guy has made like 1,500 bucks. So again, nothing huge, 
Um, but, you know, he's he's frankly been a good student for years, and now he's learning how to focus specifically on the market open and the market close. So if you want live webinars every single damn day, you go to stocksatrade.com slash pro. Tim Bowen is another valued member of the community, and we're so grateful for all of his hard work. I mean, doing, we for challenge students, okay, we do like live trading webinars, we do Q&A webinars, and you know, you're getting two to four webinars a week, but this is one guy doing it every day. Um, it's, it's tough, and I gotta respect him. Also gotta give props to just a few people. Uh, Lisa, 700 bucks in profits on three stocks. Uh, Danielle, paper trading on stocks to trade, but made almost two grand. And some people say, oh, paper trading is not real. You don't get the full emotional education, I agree, but a lot of these stocks that we're trading are ridiculously volatile and you have to just get used to the patterns also. So I think it's a two-part education and paper trading where basically you're like using fantasy cash, it's not real money, it helps. It might not be the complete education, it's not even you know 50 50 half education but i do believe understanding how to you know ride the volatility long or short it's definitely a good chunk of your education probably like 20 maybe 30 percent so socks to trade get on this platform and start paper trading danielle you know growing her paper trading account again not necessarily a complete education but it's a good start so you know you can see me responding and i say good practice it's a good way to practice. Um, here is Chan. Um, I love this on SMGX, you know, made nearly 10% today, all in six minutes. And this is the pattern that I'm going to be going over uh, in, a, in a few seconds. Uh, but this is a damn good trade. And some people might say, hey, it's such small money. But again, when you have, you know, let's say $800, $1,000 to trade with, and you can make a quick, uh, what do they make, like 50, 60, 80 bucks? That's, that's good. Wall Street looks down on this stuff, but I know how important this is for you know, people with small accounts. Uh, here's Ricky. Uh, and Ricky has learned that after multiple losses, he got the biggest profit. He caught the meat of the move. And he bought it you know, at 420 out at 490. And in the past, you know, he was buying it at 150, uh, you know, selling here at 150, eyes, actually, probably should have cut losses a little better than that but you're learning and now you know you're rewarded with SMGX which was today's biggest spiker so good job Ricky uh, here's Carlos he also did a good job on uh, SMGX in the, uh, the challenge chat room and Mark Crook nailed it and here's Lee last but definitely not least you know again just a, a small trade uh, on SMGX bought it in the threes sold it in the fours made a dollar a share and again Wall Street will look down on this. This is a very good trade for a small account. So let's get into this. Um, I'm currently long NADL uh, in the 180s. It closed at 198. After hours, is actually up to 205. Uh, you can see this is a 10-day chart that I pulled up, and this one was a huge winner. Uh, you know, my entire chat room basically nailed this one from the uh, low twos to the threes. And, you know, now it's come down and it's consolidated. And I'm not saying it's necessarily going to come back to the highs. But when I was buying it today in the 180s, it's the first green day. Okay? A lot of people don't really seem to respect the first green day. I do. Look at this. Green. If you're colorblind, I'm sorry I can't teach you. You have to differentiate between what is a green day and a red day. And now there looks to be solid, solid support here in the 170s at least for the time being, and it looks like it can bounce. I love buying the first green day. This is a number five pattern from my Penny Stocking Framework DVD, and I'm going to have some good news about that this weekend, so stay tuned. But buying the first green day, I didn't know it was going to close at 2 and be up at 205 after hours. My whole goal was to buy it in the 180s and sell it in the low twos. I figured if I was wrong, you know, if it couldn't close green, guess what? I would cut losses. I would lose five, maybe seven cents a share. But if I was right, it could go up to where there's resistance up here in the 220s. So I thought that there was 40 cents of upside and call it seven cents of downside. So six to one risk reward. Now, do I know if it's going to get to the 220s tomorrow? I don't know. Maybe it fails at two. Maybe it goes to 250. 
I don't know specifically. What I want you to get in the habit of doing is planning your risk reward and having a conservative goal and having an aggressive goal. I should also mention, damn it, too much to do. If you go to traderchecklist.com, you will find a free 11 hour DVD, right? 11 hours right now, I'm working on the next nine hours. And when I complete the next nine hours, this will no longer be free. So you should actually watch traderchecklist.com ASAP before I finish the next nine hours. I finished five of the next nine hours so far. But when this becomes a 20 hour guide, you will see that on every single trade, I have at least two goals, a conservative goal and an aggressive goal. NADL, I've already sold roughly half my position in the low twos after hours today because it was already at my goals. So I took some off. It hit my conservative target of the low twos. Do I think it can go to 220 tomorrow? Yes. So there's no point in selling all of my shares, but it's good to take some off the table with these speculative volatile plays. So if you understand that, I want you to leave a comment uh, with the words, I have two goals. And that way I'll understand that, you know, you're getting this because it's not just about having, you know, one set goal, one set target price for every stock you trade. Say, okay, if I'm right conservatively, I can make, you know, in this case, the low twos was like a 10, 15% winner. Um, or at best case, I might make 20 or 30%. It's okay to have two targets. It's okay to take profits a little too quickly. I do that quite often and it's made me a millionaire. I know too many people where they get greedy and they want 50, 100% wins and they need to learn to hit singles instead of going for home runs. So say that I have two goals. Is it I have two goals or I have two plans? I forgot what I just said. I don't even know what time it is when I'm gonna post this East Coast. I'm still in Asia, I'm working around the clock here. Uh, but you have two goals, okay? Two specific goals in mind. And it doesn't have to be a specific number. It can just be, okay, low twos for me was the range. And I sold this actually during a live challenge webinar tonight. It was supposed to just be Q&A, but turned into somewhat of a live trading webinar and I made a little over, I locked in a little over a thousand in profits. Still have a few thousand shares overnight. First green day, the beginning of the pattern, bodes well for tomorrow. We'll see. CBLI is a good example. This has been on my watch list ever since, you know, this big run up and it consolidated too. And, you know, this was its first green day, but this one was a giant first green day. And a lot of people are asking, how do you know when to get in? First of all, for me, this is, this stock is so choppy. I mean, even when it breaks out midday, it goes up to 520 and then it comes down to 460. This little thing would have, you know, weeded me out. Okay, I'm not good at, at 60 cent, 15 percent drawdowns. Um, this is too choppy for me. But if you're looking to buy these stocks, you know, for a potential first green day, okay, NADL first green day, but I didn't buy on the first initial spike. Um, you know, it spiked up pre market or not pre market midday right here. This was the big spike around 11 a.m., and it held that for the most part. You know, it held the 180s. It didn't necessarily hold two until after hours, but you can see after hours it keeps uptrending too. Um, but this spike and its ability to show me that it could, you know, finish the first day green and hold 180, that was my sign to buy. And a lot of people say, hey, Tim, you know, what about using hard stop losses? Then I don't have to look at the stock. This is a great lesson because this stock actually did crack 180, as I was telling my trading challenge students during my webinar today. Uh, it did crack 180 for about one minute and it came back very quickly and kept uptrending. But if you used a hard stop to, let's say, protect yourself at like 179 or 178, you would have been taken out. Your computer automated order would have stopped you out at 178 and I would have lost, you know, if you had been me, I would have lost like seven, eight cents a share because it technically did break 180. But the fact that it held 180 the next minute and the next few minutes and then it gradually kept going, that tells me that this has more legs. So I don't like using hard stops, I like using mental stops. I was in this stock when it was at 180 and I was watching it very, very closely. And if I had not been by my computer, 
and I just had an automated sell order when it broke 180, I would have lost. So I'm not a fan of hard stops, and I don't think you should use them. Instead, you know, you have to understand this isn't an exact science, and you're looking for the gist of the stock. You're trying to find the meat of the move. And with this one, I didn't care about, you know, risking losing five or six cents a share at the time. I'm in at 185. I care about will it still finish green? And, you know, literally the next minute after it broke 180, it held 180 and it never looked back. So this is a very good lesson. With CBLI, I think the time to buy, you know, this isn't necessarily just like a first green day kind of thing. This is more of a pattern where I specifically like to buy the, the breakout over the pre-market highs or the breakout over the early morning highs. This one, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you have to find these stocks that spike right at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. This one didn't really break out big. You know, the first big breakout really came closer to 11 a.m. It had a few breakouts. I mean, it broke the, the morning high here at 3.55 and it went to a whopping 3.70. Boring! Okay, if I had been buying this at any time in the first hour of the trading day, I might have made five or ten cents, best case. So don't be afraid that some of these stocks might not break out right at the open. This is a delayed morning spike, and I have hundreds of video lessons in my library on delayed morning spikes. So there is plenty of time to buy this, and I'm so proud of so many of you guys in the chat room. I wasn't actually feeling that well right around the market open, um, and I'm traveling all over the place. so. For me, I have to take care of my health. I missed, uh, you know, basically the first hour. Not that I would have missed anything here. Uh, SNGX was the big winner. And a lot of people are asking me, when do you buy this? You know, this is, first of all, there's, there's positive news. But right pre-market, I mean, this is at 7 a.m. And it hits a high of like 390. Right when the market opens, it breaks 390 and it goes to 4. Okay, so you can buy this one right at the open. You just have to be willing to get out. I mean, stock trades right near the market open can be very quick. And so this goes from literally right at the open at four-ish up to, you know, 460 in the first six minutes. So you have to be prepared for that speed. And then it comes down and then it has another breakout, you know, another nearly a dollar a share breakout. And that was pretty much it for SNGS. You know, it was choppy. It tried to put up a fight. But the big money on this one was right at the market open. So this is why, and by the way, you know, Tim Bowen nailed this with his webinar, uh, live streaming webinar today. And this is why I think it's good to focus at the market open and I think why learning from Tim Bowen uh, is so useful. So SNGX was today's big runner. And I know I saw like hundreds of people in my chat room nailing it. Um, I'm proud of you. IDXG, here's one that had you know a big win the other day and I actually caught this uh, pretty pretty nicely pre-market uh, under three okay I was buying it in here which turned out to be a pretty damn good entry and a lot of people ask me questions about this I'm sorry I wanted to do a video like that day and then today and uh, I'm just running out of time I have way too much going on and I like that you know this is this is what it means to be real some people are like Tim you should get organized Fuck that, okay? I'm a fucking multimillionaire living my dream life, working on my charity, trading stocks in the middle of the night, helping students. I don't like organization. I like having, you know, all this crazy stuff going on and trying to make it work. And even with all my craziness in my life, I still spotted IDXG pre-market and I was buying it at three-ish. Here is where this one gets interesting. It did not break the pre-market highs of 3.30 until like 10 minutes in, right? So all pre-market long, it was using 3.30 as a top. And I did not think that it could necessarily break 3.30. So I sold it in the low threes. I made like, I don't know, like 10, 15 cents a share. I had multiple exits, okay? So I did not get the big spike that I wanted because it could not convincingly break 3.30. And if you were in my chat room, you would have seen me say, hey, I'm not going to buy this. This cannot break 3.30. Sure enough, it did at around, you know, 9.45 a.m. But at this point, there had been so many fake outs, and I know it looks tiny on the chart now, but at the time, 3.30, I thought, was the top. So even though I only made 10, 15 cents a share, 
And some people were like, oh, Tim, you missed it entirely. It hit my first goal, okay? My first goal was that I thought that it might not top. It might not break out at 330. It might top there. So if it tops at 330, then I'm just trying to get out at 320, 325, 315, 310. I don't care what, you know? I was in to be exact at like 297. So I had some wiggle room. But if you are unsure whether the stock can break out, it's okay to sell too soon. I wasn't angry at myself. I wasn't cursing myself for being like, oh, then it went up another dollar or dollar fifty a share. Because then it also dropped. And this is a great lesson. Even though I missed out on this run up and, you know, theoretically I should have bought back in. You can't trust these stocks. This stock did a fucking financing midday. Okay? They are scummy sons of bitches. And that can happen with any stock. It's not probable. It's not even likely. But it can happen. So when it fell, and I was actually texting with Stephen Ducks because I wasn't by a computer, and he was like telling me intraday financing. And I was like, this is why I play so safely. Okay, there was a huge wall of sellers here at 3 and then 310. And even though they eventually got busted, they turned out to be right. And I'm guessing those sellers at 3 and 310 knew of the financing. They didn't just pull off an intraday financing. Okay, they pulled off the financing. And they were planning it for a while. And then when the stock went up enough, they announced it. So always be careful if a stock is not breaking a key level. And don't feel bad if you sell too soon. Do not feel bad at all. I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel bad about sleeping a little and missing SNGX. I don't feel bad about missing CBLI because it is too choppy. And I don't feel bad at all about NADL because this one is my current play. And it offers great lessons on how not to get stopped out and how to recognize the first green day in this speculative market. A lot of people are like, okay, Tim, I'll just buy any stock. Let me see. Let me write down notes. I'll buy any stock with a first green day that's recently run. No, we're in a speculative market, okay? These are four stocks that have each run 50, 100, 200% in a few days. So when the market is speculative, you can be a little more aggressive. This doesn't necessarily apply in all market environments, and it certainly doesn't apply to all stocks. But NADL has earned the right for me to buy it. And I tried it, you know, to be fair, I tried buying it the day before too, and I was wrong for a morning spike. So I've had my eye on this stock for a while. This wasn't just me buying a random company out of the blue. I have been waiting for signs of a dip buy on NADL. If you've been reading my watch list every day, you would see that. And also, you know, I was wrong buying it the previous day. Let me show you two days. So never feel that this is like an exact science. Here was a little fake out morning spike the previous day. And it went into a wall of sellers. But what a difference a day makes. Now today, or today for you guys, you know, in the U.S., <laughs> today it had a spike and it held it. And look at the range, was in the 180s. The previous spike failed and the range was in the 170s. So you have a clear little higher range and you have a spike. And now, you know, it's spiking after hours and it's spiking uh, late day. So that makes me think that this can bounce. How far can it bounce? I don't know. All I know is I'm looking at this, you know, kind of coiling, curling pattern. And that told, tells me that, wait a minute. This support from back here, you know, in the 160s. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. It had support right in here at 163. Let's scroll over here. Where was support? Right in the 160s. So now this is support. So obviously there could be negative news overnight. That's the risk with any overnight position. But technically speaking, there is a ton of support now at 165. And for me, if it did not finish green today, I would have exited and lost five or 10 cents a share. Now I'm already up over 10 cents a share, nearly 20 cents a share after hours. And I don't know how far this thing can go, but we're in a speculative market. It already hit my first goal. So I took some profits and now we'll see. Maybe I'll take profits at the same spot tomorrow. Maybe I'll take profits at a higher spot. Maybe I'll have to actually take losses. You never know 100% with these stocks, but if you do plan it, Ideally with two plans. Again, if I'm making sense, leave a comment just below and say, I have two plans. 
referring to you. I want you to have two plans and two goals. That is how you profit off these things. And it's not about necessarily chasing it. It's about figuring out, you know, a good kind of responsible conservative entry. When I don't necessarily just want to buy it randomly in the 160s and think that 160 is going to hold, I don't mind buying this in the 180s rather than the 160s because now the stock has proven that A, it can spike, B, it can hold the majority of its spike, and C, it's probably the first green day of the pattern, which is very early in the long pattern. So it had to prove itself for me to give it patience. Uh, otherwise, you know, when I had this fake out spike, I mean, I was in and out within a few minutes because it just, it couldn't prove itself. Now the next day, it proves itself, so I'm back in. CBLI, just way too choppy, okay? And I don't mind missing too choppy. IDXG, I absolutely nailed the fact that this could spike more. I saw a bunch of people on social media and other chat rooms, and they're like, oh, Sites doesn't know shit. This news isn't that important. Hey, dumbasses, it's not necessarily about how good the news is right now. If you get enough volume, if you get those early shorts, I'm grateful for every single person that thinks that I'm full of shit and they bet against me because they're opening the door to these massive short squeezes. Even if they were eventually right, guess what? If you're shorting this in the threes or 350 and it goes to four or 450, you better be fucking rich and adding to your position or you must cut losses quickly. Or you can be like the group of stubborn shorts that are out there and they just keep adding higher and higher and they keep tempting fate and they keep playing with fire. And actually, they lost a lot on IDXG when it went supernova a few months ago. They lost a lot on DRYS. They lost a lot on PBMD. This group of stubborn shorts, I mean, they just almost risk blowing up on every single runner. It's kind of ridiculous. And that's not a good way to trade, I don't think. This is why I have the most millionaire students, not because we're the biggest betters. It's because we trade safe. And we don't want to play with fire. We don't want stressful trading. When I'm dip buying IDXG, I wasn't even buying it at the highs at 330. I'm buying it 10% off its highs. When I'm buying N NADL, I'm not buying it in the highs and the threes. I'm buying it, you know, at roughly a 50% drop off the highs on a potential first green day. So even though we're trading the most volatile stocks in the entire market, as you can see, I'm trading them very, very conservatively. I like dip buying. I like confirmations of when a stock, you know, finishes green or looks like it's going to finish green. I'm not buying this on the morning of a potential first green day. A stock might spike and then fail as it did the previous day. And then I had to exit. This time I added to my position because it finished strongly and because, you know, it was its first green day and I'm excited to see what it can do tomorrow. Do I know 100% if it's going to spike more? No. I don't have inside information. I'm not psychic. I'm not manipulating the stock. I'm just playing these patterns and I'm playing the odds. And if you're not familiar with the patterns or the odds, I suggest you go through my now 4,700 plus video lesson library. It's roughly 400 hours. And you will see these same patterns again and again and again and again and again and again. And you just have to be ready to take advantage of them, whether you're buying or shorting, okay? A lot of people are like, oh, Tim, you shouldn't have made fun of all the early shorts on CBLI the other day. I will make fun of the early shorts on CBLI because I don't want anybody learning those dumbass tactics from newbies who think that they're so smart. When a stock like this keeps going, you don't risk losing 50 cents or a dollar or $2 a share on your short. What if this thing goes to 10? Okay, we're not all hugely rich where we can just add to our shorts forever. So be extra, extra careful and have two plans. Have a conservative plan and have an aggressive plan. And always, obviously, rule number one is be willing to cut losses quickly. Anyways, these are just a few patterns. I got to go take a nap. Um, I'm excited to see what NADL can do tomorrow. It might be nothing. I don't know. I already have a nice profit. I've already locked in half. And also, for everybody else, please watch my trader checklist guide ASAP. When I finish the next nine hours, it won't be free anymore. 
So enjoy it while you can. Also, the free webinar is on May 1st. Stephen Ducks challenge students get ready for April 26th. That's it for today. I'm losing my voice. Thank you. Leave a comment, by the way, if you understand what I'm saying with all this. I have two goals or I have two plans, whichever is fine, just so I know that you paid attention to this video lesson because I like teaching and I hope that you learn. Thank you.